Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach. I have been a professional student of human behavior for 74 years. 33 of those years I've been a family systems therapist and a trauma recovery therapist. This is one of a whole series of videos that I'm glad to upload to try and pass on to you what I've learned across those many years. I want to focus in this video on a subject that you may or may not be interested in sometime, all the time, never. It uh, came to me several days ago when someone in a conversation made the chance comment about, oh, she's really immature. That got me to thinking, well, what is mature? What does that mean? How can we differentiate between someone who's mature and someone who's immature? And why is that important? Who cares? Well, uh, I leave the answer to that question to you. I have my own. But I'd like to explore with you briefly in this video some ideas about personal maturity. I don't mean physical maturity. I mean mental, emotional, psychological, and spiritual, holistic maturing. To begin, let me invite you to think about someone, past or present, someone you've known or someone in the media. Think of someone that you judge to be, quote, mature. Very, she, she is very mature. He is very mature. Think of one or more people that you give that label to. Now, think of someone, an adult, Think of someone that you say, well, she's pretty immature, or he is very immature. To come up with those estimates, you have to have criteria for judging. I wonder if you know what criteria you use. For perspective, as you know, all living things are born, they grow, they decay, and eventually they die. Somewhere along that process, they reach their maximum potential. After that point in their growth cycle, they start to decay or decline. So we can say, just for the sake of discussion, maturing is the process of growing towards your highest potential. You ever try to describe what your highest potential is? It's an interesting exercise. Personal growth towards your highest potential takes place on a whole a range of different dimensions. For example, over time you grow more aware, more aware of what's going on inside of you, outside of you, and in the world around you. Your, own, your knowledge of yourself and the world around you grows. That's part of personal growth. I propose that your attitudes and your values grow as you age and become more knowledgeable and more aware. Would you agree that some of your values and some of your attitudes are different now than when you were six or seven or fourteen? Um, would you agree that part of personal growth is about your social skills, since we humans are social critters? We learn over time how to best get along with our fellow critters. So I would bet that you feel you are more adept at being social with people now than you were, say, when you're 16 or 4. So our social skills are part of our personal growth. Our spirituality is a dimension that for many people shifts over time, especially as they reach middle age and old age. Another dimension uh, that I suspect you would identify with is our focus. When we're kids, when we're, quote, immature, we tend to focus on our own immediate needs and gratification. As we age and learn more about ourselves and the world, our focus gradually morphs into uh, focusing on the welfare of many other people as well as ourselves. That's a shift in focus. <clears throat> so these are many dimensions of personal growth as you move towards personal maturity. Note that you can intentionally grow these factors, um, saying, I take my life seriously, I want to grow, it's, part, it's an important priority of mine, 
So I'm going to work at it. I'm going to be self-aware and make myself self-responsible to grow. Or you can take a much easier road and say, well, I'll grow along with experience. I'll just let it happen. Which of those describes you? I propose that mature people take an interest in their own personal growth. That's my opinion. You don't have to agree. Speaking of that, here are some other key, key criteria. These are a few of many criteria that you can use to judge holistic maturity. See how you feel about each one of these. I propose that a mature person is able to feel, give, and receive unconditional love without guilt, confusion, or anxiety. Give, feel, and receive unconditional love. Do you think immature people can do that? A mature person is aware of their inner, outer, and social environments, as I mentioned. Immature people are less aware or not aware. Mature people are living on purpose. They are seeking, why am I on earth? And if they find an answer, they work towards achieving their purpose every day or frequently as much as their limits and circumstances allow. Immature people have not yet discovered why they are on earth. Would you agree? Notice your reaction. Mature people characteristically are adaptable to change. Our environment, inner and outer, changes all the time. A constant daily, hourly, weekly, monthly challenge is how do I adapt to the changes that I experience? Some of which I choose, others I don't. A mature person, I propose, is able to stay balanced in a number of different domains. Uh, he or she can balance between work, rest, and play, between focusing on themselves and or other people, and they can stay balanced on focusing on right now, the near future, and the far future. They can flex back and forth and focus and stay balanced and grounded in those three domains, also some others. I propose that a truly mature person is self-nurturing uh, and self-actualized. Self-nurturing says, I really care about my holistic health and I'm going to look after it proactively. Self-actualized means I have found, I'm filling my needs and I'm able to fill my needs well enough so I can pursue my life purpose. That's what self-actualization stands for. Uh, a, a fully mature person has developed some degree of spirituality, some kind of concept and comfortable relationship with some sort of transcendent higher power in the universe. That's contrasted to being religious. Spirituality is different than religion. I propose that a fully mature person usually is realistically optimistic instead of being pessimistic or idealistic. Mature people see the world as it really is. People who are mature often are able to control their impulses so they don't behave in ways that later they regret and they behave in ways that tend to be respectful towards other people. <clears throat> rather than lash out or feel victimized or aggressive. <clears throat> Holistic, holistically mature people are able to identify and assert their needs with a variety of people, uh, individuals, groups, without anxiety, without embarrassment, without shame, without guilt. <clears throat> Can you do that? Mature people are able to stay relatively calm and centered no matter what's going on around them or in them. Can you do that? Really mature people, I propose, are able to admit and accept 
there are limitations psychologically, physiologically, socially. They admit them, accept them, and adapt to them rather than fight them, uh, bemoan them, etc. Finally, I propose that truly mature people are frequently, if not always, guided by their true self. If you've studied Lesson 1 on my website and the related videos, you'll know what that means. If you haven't, you won't. I invite you to study Lesson 1 to find out how often is your true self guiding you. Who's really running your life? Your true self or, quote, someone else, unquote. With these sample criteria in mind, now think of the person or persons that you labeled as mature. Do you still think that? Think of the people or person that you labeled as immature. Do you still feel that? And now we come to the real question that this video poses. How mature are you? How holistically mature is the person who lives inside your skin? There's no right or wrong to this. There's simply self-awareness and however you feel about the answer. This is a complex subject. I don't pretend this is a, a comprehensive treatment. I do invite you, in case you are intrigued by this question and these sample criteria, I invite you to read a, an article that I just published, part of my, my website in Lesson 1, about maturity. It goes into more detail, gives more background, more perspective, and gives you a worksheet that you can use to more thoroughly identify how mature are you and or how mature is someone else. So here's the link to that article. I invite you to take a look at it. and broaden your awareness. As always, I am glad to have any kind of feedback that you'd like to offer on this video or any other videos or my website. I'm glad to have you make a comment on YouTube or uh, email or anything else. Um, I hope you found this video thought-provoking, interesting, useful, and I appreciate your attention. Thanks for watching.